Hey, what's going on, folks? It's your man Lloyd Briggery here, and this is another exciting episode of Behind the Tracing Paper. Today, we got two legendary artists in the world of cartooning. We got High Eisman, uh, who's been around forever, and we got Fernando Ruiz. So, uh, get ready for a good time, sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. <laughs> Um, I, I told Hi earlier that I was just going to say, hey, Hi, tell us from the beginning, what was it like? And then just let him talk for the next 90 minutes, but I don't know that. It was dark. <laughs> <laughs> he said there should be light. <laughs> then you don't want to go back that far. Not that far. Oh. Uh, <laughs> I do want to pick up, though, uh, you were just in the library, and uh, I overheard you talking about, like, the origins of, like, Batman and, like, some of the some of the, the uh, more iconic characters that we have today. Um, and I know a lot of people um, just kind of wonder like, okay, like they see Batman or they see characters like that and they wonder like, where did it come from or did it just happen or, or what? Like, what was that kind of evolution like? Because before there were capes, there were like, there were other comics out there. You want his story or the, <laughs> the way it really was? I want the way, what do we want? Where it really, 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 really was. was. Gustav Dory. Uh -huh. And the Dante's Inferno. Yes. Uh, actually has Batman, Batman in the, in the uh, engravings. No kidding. That's what we were looking for uh, upstairs in the library. Right. And of course, a cartoon, well, artists at that time uh, always went to Dory first. That's those were Bible uh, pictures and things like that. Right. And there was a bat. There's a three or four Batman in the in the engravings. Uh -huh. And uh, if you look at them, you see where Batman came from. Wow. But his story was that he just dreamed it up. Uh -huh. He needed something to beat Superman, so right. came up. But essentially, it's uh, Gust of Dory, 1848. Nice. So Uncle Uncle Gustav, first uh, graphic artist. The very first graphic novel artist. Yes. Right, right. I know. Um, I remember when I took your class. Um, it just so happened that I bought uh, Dory's like illustration book as just reference because I thought it was really cool. I, I was in Barnes and Noble just kind of goofing off one day, and I was like, "Hey, this is cool." I had no idea like he was like the guy, you know. Uh, and I know you always did a good job of telling us not to. Like, everybody has their own artist, their, their favorite artist, but you always emphasize, find out who your artists were influenced by and find out who those guys were influenced by. Now, where did you, where did you like, get that, that bit of wisdom from? Oh, what influenced me? Yeah. The big three. Uh -huh. Hal Foster, uh -huh. Milk and Niff, Alex Raymond. Ooh. Ooh. And, 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 and how did they grab your attention? Uh, Sundays. Um, this is the days before uh, color movies. Um, uh, oh, very little color in uh, magazines, only cover magazine, you know, the cover movie. Mm -hmm. And Sunday was this blast of color. Newspapers came wrapped in the newspaper, in the comic. Mm -hmm. That's what sold the newspaper. Wow. So people would buy three New York newspapers with the same news but different comics in each one. And they said, we buy that for the kids. Because adults never read comics. Right, right. Except if they didn't get that newspaper that week, they got very irate. <laughs> but uh, it's still the same story. I never read comics, but I do notice this comic, and what do you think of that, that kind of thing? Right, right. Yeah. Huh. Okay, that's interesting. Uh, so, Fernando, I, I want to go back and forth uh, when we start out here. What um, what hooked you? Into comics? Into comics, yeah. Well, um, May probably started with uh, Mickey Mouse. Okay. Disney cartoons, um, a lot of the superhero cartoons that were around in the 70s, which were reruns of cartoons from the 60s, the right. filmation stuff and uh, Super Friends, that sort of thing. Right. Um, Kurt Swan, Superman, he was a big favorite of mine when I was a kid. And uh, Charles Schultz, Drawing Peanuts. Wow. And of course, Archie. Archie. <laughs> no, not you. <laughs> um, do you remember like your first like 
like the first time you saw a comic and like you know like what was that like? Yeah, the first ones were the the hand me downs from my brother. Uh -huh. He had them and he didn't care about them and right. I liked them because they were it was if you like stories and reading and writing yeah. and you like drawing. This was one place that offered both. Right. So to me, it was the best fusion of, of visual storytelling. Nice, nice. And after that, the, the rest is. Uh, did you now the Cuber School? Is that where you came for art training, or did you get trained elsewhere? Uh, I, after high school, I went to college, mm -hmm. uh, Caldwell College here in Caldwell, New Jersey. All right. And I was a fine art major, mm -hmm. and I, I learned drawing and painting. Uh, while I was there, I wanted to be a fine artist, a right. landscape painter. Wow. Um, but I always liked comics. And even while I was in college, I was still reading comics, and I, and I wanted to give that a shot. Right. So um, when I graduated from Caldwell, I came here. Wow. Cool. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, hi. I've, I've heard about this, uh, this collection of... Um, Newspaper uh, strips <clears throat> that you that you collected uh, when it came out. Can you can you talk a little bit about that? The, just the compiling of them and 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 you know what that led to, if if anything. Which collection? There's two collections. There's one of reproductions and there's one of originals. Both. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, Prince Valiant, I guess, uh, is the first thing I collected. Uh, I was about uh, 10 when it started, mm -hmm. and uh, it, it, the newspaper was a dime, right. Sunday paper. Nice. For a dime, you could get a hot dog and a soda at that time. So the newspaper wasn't number one in my... <laughs> so I'd wait the following day, and a lot of those newspapers were in the garbage, and I would grab the, the comics and clip Prince Valiant, which obviously, if you see them in the library, they were huge. Wow. And I thought I was the only one in the world collecting these things. Right. Then uh, when I came to a point where I was meeting other young cartoonists, uh -huh. I found that Joe collected them and yeah. uh, Jose Delbo collected them in Argentina and some guy in Iceland was collecting them <laughs> and some guy in Jabubi, uh, <laughs> South Africa. <laughs> so it was something that a lot of people mm -hmm. sort of turned on to, right? Because of the uh, of his ability, and mm -hmm. it, uh, he actually forced Alex Raymond. To, you, you're probably all familiar with Flash Gordon. Yeah. His work forced Raymond to improve, and if you see early Raymond, Flash Gordon, and the later ones. You see the uh, the effect that uh, Hal Foster had on, him. Right. and he had that effect on me. Too. <laughs> oh yeah, for sure. So let me ask you this: This, this kind of um, speaks to something that we uh, we see all these uh, debates on uh, social media today, and uh, you know, there's an idea just here at the school just about competition um, and how you just spoke of you know one artist comes out and kind of raises the bar, kind of challenges yeah, the artists yeah, that, are, yeah. that are already out to, hey, you got to step it up. Um, uh, and you got a, a chance, you know, just throughout your career to work with so many different artists. Like, what, what was that dynamic like? Was it, um, did you find that more artists uh, appreciated the new artists coming along to challenge them? You know, were they looking for that challenge? Or was it like, oh, crap, here's this new guy. I got to, you know, I got to step my game up now. What, what was that like? I think it happens in school. I went to an art school in New York. Uh, everyone comes in from a high school where they're the hot shot right. cartoonist. Yeah. And you come into an art school and suddenly there's a hotter shot right. and a hottest shot. <laughs> and the hottest shot of all, and you can't believe it. Uh -huh. There's one of those can't believe it. Yeah. And that steps up your, that's the competition that also helps. But it, it's not competition because um, he causes you to work harder. Right. And I found everyone in the class with you right. is not your competition. It could be your step to success. Mm -hmm. In my case, the first guy that got work was uh, a fellow by the name of Frank Thorne, who used to 
who used to be here, Red Sonia used to be hanging <laughs> I here. Remember the Red Sonia, yeah. And uh, Frank got the first work in a uh, comic book company. Right. And while he was there, uh, he found out they needed somebody to do Smokey Stoker. <coughs> and uh, it was a time when the comics were on the downside. And right. I got the job and it started my career as a ghost. Nice. That isn't where I wanted to be, but that uh -huh. I had telephone bills and all that stuff <laughs> forced. Yeah, I understand. Um, all right, so I want to I pause there because that's I, I really want to wrap that here in a second. But um, Fernando, uh, just back back to that that competition idea. When mm -hmm. you were coming to the Kubert School. Um, your class was huge at first, right? Did you guys have like 125? 125 in my that first year. That was day one, first year, right? Day one, I was in 1D. 1D? 1D. It was in the um, 1B classroom today. Right. Yeah. Now, what was the, uh, what was the, the tone um, there as far as the hot, hotter, hottest shot? And I can't believe it. Like, what well, was that like? Uh, well, first of all, with 125, I mean, right. there were people I didn't even meet in yeah. that first year group. Yeah, so, sure, I mean, yeah. I didn't know what was going on with 1A or, yeah. you know, 1E. Um, and with 125 people, right. we were so diverse, uh -huh. you know. So there was, there was the guy you knew was the good Batman artist and the right. guy who was really good at drawing reading cards and the right. guy who was the good airbrush artist. So, I mean everybody had their specialty there. Right. Um, me, I just tried to be as good as at as many different things as I could because yeah. I really wanted to hedge my bets. Yeah. I just wanted to work. Right. You know, that was that was my first goal. Uh, huh. Now when you get when you graduated, mm -hmm. how many were in your class? That mighty 125 uh -huh. was whittled down to a fit trim 14. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. That's yes. like Navy SEALs, man. Oh, <laughs> so From, I don't remember how many we ended with uh, at the end of that first year. Right. But my first year was the 1991-92 school year. Right. Um, but I know going into my second year, we had about, I'm going to say about 40 of us. Wow. Because we had two, five first year groups were right. riddled down to two wow. second year groups. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> every every school holiday that we had, uh -huh. we knew somebody wasn't coming back. <laughs> it's like a mystery it, it was like we were all soldiers in Vietnam. <laughs> and periodically, some of us would be picked off. Right. So you're just walking through the jungle and boom, there goes Charlie. <laughs> you seen or heard from again? Never, nope. But uh -huh. less competition. Right. Ah. All of a sudden, uh -huh. I'm not the best out of 125, but I'm the best out of 14. <laughs> <laughs> those, are, those are way better odds. There you go. <laughs> that's that's really cool. Wow. I can't even imagine what it's like to have that many students here. I mean, <clears throat> my whole time here, we've never had 125 students in the entire student body. Yeah. Back then, I, I think we had maybe close to about 200 students in the wow. building. Wow, that's, uh, <coughs> that's interesting. All right, I wanna, I wanna talk about how things have changed over the years too, but hi, um, when, when you were first, uh, when you were first uh, becoming a professional, um, was it that, uh, could, you, could you say, like when people say, well, you know, what do you do for a living? Were you just an illustrator and like you did many different things or were you specifically like, you know, like I do this, this job and this is what I do? Like what, what was When I like? first started? Yeah, when you first started. Well, coming out of art school, there's a guy named Wortham that wrote a book about seduction of the innocent. Oh yeah. How all people that, all young people that read comics become juvenile delinquents. Right. Every mother in America started burning the books. Wow. So comic books were in the, weren't in the question. Right. So I had to look around for work and I got a job doing Valentine cards. Ah. And uh, Valentine cards uh, weren't a big payer, but uh, I had been trained as a pre-production letterer. Okay. In those days, book jackets were all done by hand. They weren't done, they weren't printed, they were actually uh, uh, 
lettered by hand. Wow. And designed. So yeah. uh, I started designing and package designs for the the Valentine cards, mm -hmm. and I was getting and I was creating fonts for each for each group. I, so I could do four a day. Uh, I would get twenty five dollars for each design. Huh. But then I wanted to do comic book, uh, comic books, right. and I was getting Smoky Stover, right. which paid seventeen fifty for the page. That's seventeen dollars and fifty cents. Uh -huh. So I would do the four mm -hmm. package designs, make a hundred dollars, right. and about it could about be about four or five hours, mm -hmm. and then I'd spend eight hours on this comic page yeah. and make seventeen dollars and fifty cents <laughs> and I couldn't wait to get to that comic book page. Yeah. So I found out it's an illness. Uh -huh. People that actually stay in this school <laughs> right. and work at it. Uh -huh. It's an illness. That's why fourteen were left. <laughs> Early on uh -huh. Joe created the the you know the uh, our our courses. Right. And <clears throat> It's a lot of work. Yeah. And it was even more work when Joe was here because he made sure that everybody had to get that deadline and he didn't make it out. And one guy, early on, maybe the first class, I remember he was from California. Wow. And he came in and he was he was distraught. And I had given him a page, an eight and a half by eleven page, to hand letter. And he had lettered half of it and then the the last half sort of was very strange. And I said, didn't you realize that you went off a lot? He says, I had to smoke a joint just to be able to get through the page. I didn't realize he kept lettering after he smoked that thing. He didn't see it until I pointed it out. He says, you guys want a lot of work. I want to be on my sickle. And I don't want to be here. And I, I said, well, you know, that's your decision. Wow. So he went back to his sickle. <laughs> Good for him. Yeah. <laughs> I just got to hop on the sickle, right? <laughs>